Hi, my name is Stacey Brown, and I am a poet and an MRK advocate and a founder of Loomless and Worthy. Give me one second. There is a dog near me. Go lay down. Go lay down. <laughs> go lay down. You got to go lay down. <laughs> um, and so I'm going to talk about disclosure dilemmas and how to say, share safely, openly, and with choice. I remember being first diagnosed at 25 and just being over feeling all this pain and disappointment and anger and that I wanted to get to the part of where I was okay. Everyone kept telling me eventually everything will be fine. Eventually you'll be okay. And I was rushing to get to that part. And I thought that the real healing started by me sharing my story. And I remember calling a friend, I called my friend Janae, and I was just in tears because I was like, I'm ready to share, I'm ready to do this. And this was probably a month after I had been diagnosed. And um, she had told me that I wasn't ready. And I am forever grateful for that because I wasn't. I was definitely in a space of where I needed to process a lot of things on my own and process a lot of things without the opinions of others. And I figured by me sharing my story at that point in time that I would be able to answer a question that we probably all have have had um, just around like, why me and why now? And why at 25 and why at this point in my life and, and why when I'm single and I don't necessarily have a supportive partner to go through this and, and why when I'm in Chicago, in grad school, away from my family in Atlanta, and um, I really wanted to be able to find a purpose behind MRKH. And I realized that by sharing a year later, by sharing when I was ready, I was able to process those negative thoughts uh, that I was having, where I was questioning if I was a woman, where I was questioning if I was worthy. And it gave me time to remind myself of what is true. So that when I was able to share my story, I was reminded of those things and, and standing on a firm foundation of what is true. So that not if, but when somebody says something that made me uncomfortable or when somebody asks a question in a rude way, that I would know that the truth is I am a woman, that the truth is I'm still worthy, that my life and my body still has a purpose. I think in order to safely um, be able to disclose it is important. It was important for me to identify the things that I needed and then be able to identify who I could get those things from. I remember sharing, um, wanting to have a conversation about MRKH with a family member and they cut me off and they told me to be grateful. And that hurt. I felt abandoned. I felt alone. I felt like a burden in a way. But looking back, I realized that um, she said she said to be grateful because we're taught that like grief and gratitude can't coexist, that we can't be sad about something, but also be grateful for the things that we have. And I also think it is extremely important to define a safe space and define what that safe space means to you and know that your safe space doesn't have to look like someone else's. And also to know that your safe space doesn't have to be earned. You don't have to perform for this safe space. You don't have to show up in a particular way. You can show up with your grief and with your anger and with your disappointment and still be worthy of that space. Lastly, I wanna discuss disclosing with choice. I still process this feeling and it's still very hard, but a lot of times I feel like my body made a decision for me and without me. And that it took away my opportunity to choose. And that when I have to make a decision around MRKH, it feels like I'm requiring my 16 year old self, the person who would hope that she would have been diagnosed at 16 to make these very adult decisions. And for me, knowing that I have the power of choice came with trusting myself. But I also understand that it's really, really hard to trust yourself at a time when you feel like you can't trust your body. And even though with MRKH, you feel like you're out of control of so many things and that there are very little things that you can control of when they happen and why they happen. But I want you to know that you are in control of your choice. And that even though it feels like your choice was taken away, that you get to choose. 
And I know it feels like a lot of things were taken from you, but here is one thing that can't be taken and that is your choice. And so I just want you to stand in that today around any choice that you're going to make around MRK. And also knowing that you have the right to choose who you want to tell, when you want to tell them, and how you want to tell them. I also wrote a poem about today. I don't know where I am on time. <laughs> Stacey, please. <laughs> um, Alrighty, and there's this song that I was gonna play to, to read with it. I don't own the rights to this song. I know how that can get. Um, and let me know if y'all are able to hear it. <laughs> Alrighty. I didn't lie, I just didn't tell you. The right time always felt wrong. I was willing and ready to share something that was so sacred. I was willing and ready to share one of God's biggest secrets. But I had expectations around what you would say and what you should say. Okay. And expectations have failed me before. I was tired of people telling me to stay strong and that everything happens for a reason. I was tired of people deflecting because grief made them uncomfortable. Therefore, my pain was an inconvenience. I deserve better. I deserve more. I didn't lie, I just didn't tell you because you haven't earned the right to know. Thank you. Oh